in this place God we thank you Father and we come before you with a reverential fear of who you are Lord we don't take this opportunity lightly God that you've given us the space and time to be able Father to enter into your presence we say right now in the master's name of Jesus God that the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things are checked at the door and we come inside of your presence God unhindered and unchecked by any satanic force or outside hindrances. We bless you, Lord, for being the, red, the great Father that you are. And as I stand before your people, Father, I decrease so that you can increase. I thank you, Lord, for giving each and every last one of us, God, myself included, a rhema word, God, that will pick us from up out of any situation that we may be in. We honor you for it, Lord. So in the master's name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Y'all praise God in this place, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said praise God in this place. I ain't say praise God in this place. Praise him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Listen, before you sit down, I want you to touch a few people around you and tell them a house of prayer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Babies, you are free to go. Teens and young adults, you are free to go. Everybody say that with me one more time, a house of prayer. House of prayer. Caleb asked me the other day, he said, uh, uh, this was on Friday, he said, Dad, do we got church tomorrow? I said, nah, Caleb, we don't, we don't have church tomorrow. So the next day goes by, he said, Dad. I said, yes, sir. He said, do we got church tomorrow? I said, Caleb, yeah, we got, we got church in the morning. He said, yay. He said, yay, we, we, we have church we have church in the morning. And, 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 and it reminded me of when David said in Psalms 122 verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I, I can't remember as a child, I was so excited to be able to be in the presence of God. I can't remember as a child being so excited to be able to step foot through the doors of the church and where we are now, the state and time that we're in, there's a lot of people that are laughing at the church. The church has become a mockery because there are Christians who's come behind the doors. They are, they are educated. They got the scripture. They, they can quote it to you front to back. But as soon as they leave the church, they live just like the world. They act just like the world. And Jesus said something in Matthew chapter 21. He said it in verse uh, 13. And he said, my house. Everybody say my house. my house. My house shall be called. A house of what? A house of prayer. And I want you to start off by going there for me. Matthew chapter 21 and let's start at verse 13. Let's go there real quick. Matthew chapter 21 and let's start at verse 13. Matthew was known as a tax collector. Matthew was a tax collector. Matthew, if you read the book of Matthew, it has to do with a lot of the genealogies, the records and everything that has to do with the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 21, let's go to verse 13. Start at verse 12 for me, go back to 12, go back to 12. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I'm your vessel. Hallelujah. God, I'm your vessel. Jesus did what? Entered. He entered the temple what? Courts. courts. He entered the temple courts. Let's stop there for a minute. He entered the temple courts. Now, the Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts 
with praise. Psalms 100 verse 4. Amen. Enter into his what? His gates with what? To express gratitude or appreciation. And into his courts with what? Praise. Wait a minute. So why are you coming through? Why are you coming through the courts? Doom and gloom. Jesus. <laughs> why, why are you coming through the courts and your face is hung down? You ought to, you ought to praise God. Hallelujah. That the enemy didn't take you out throughout the week. You better praise God every time you step foot through these doors. <laughs> David said in Psalms 84 verse 10, I'd rather be a keeper of the door. <laughs> better a day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a keeper of the door. I just want to be a greeter. I just want to be an usher. He said, you don't have to give me the title. Just let me stand in the courts of who the Father is. You have what you call the outer courts, the inner courts, and the holy of holies. Hallelujah. The outer courts is a representation of your flesh. Because there's a lot of people that stay in their flesh and they still try to come into the courts. <laughs> the inner courts is a representation of your soul. But then you have the holy of holies. That's when you tap into the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when you tap into the spirit. And it's a spirit to spirit connection with the father. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 16. That his spirit bears witness with my spirit that we are children of God. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus entered the temple courts and he did what? He drove out all who were doing what? Buying. Buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money chargers, the money changers, and the benches of those doing what? Selling doves. Selling doves. Selling doves. Now, now, he drove out those who were in there buying and selling, meaning that they've turned it into a business and not a church. Yeah. Jesus. They've turned it into a business and not a church. Everything that they do is for self-gain. They're teaching each and every person how to be an entrepreneur, but they're not teaching them how to get their soul saved. That's what it's about. They'll bring in individuals to give you a motivational speech. They'll bring in individuals to tell you to come up here, line up, and give me $1,000. If you can't give me $1,000, give me $500. You can't give me $500, give me next month's rent. Because that's exactly what's happening in the church. And that's why a lot of people are afraid to step foot through the doors. I had a person tell me that I can watch you online, but I'm afraid to step foot through the doors. Because the last time I came to a church, they passed the offering basket around five times. You only got one wallet. You only got one person. Why in the world would you pass it around five times? See, this is the kind of message they really don't like. They don't like this kind of message. Because when you tip over their sacred crowd, cows, then they get upset with you about the situation. <laughs> but Paul said, necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. He said, I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God in Acts chapter 20, verse 27. Are y'all being blessed so far? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the what? What is a money changer? A money changer is say, say that I'm in America, but then I have to go to Canada. They go in and they change, they exchange the money because my American money is completely different than the Canadian money. Is this making sense to you? That's a money changer. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Okay, okay. Of the money changers and bitches of those selling doves. Why was it significant about the doves? Because back then in those times, the doves would sell for the least. That was the least sacrifice. Those were for poor. Those were for the widows. And they were going in and taking advantage of the people that were poor and robbing those who were widows. Jesus. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Amen. Everybody say context. context. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. It is my opinion. Written. It is written. Behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. It is written of you to be where you are today. It is written of me to be where I am today. It is written of us to be exactly where we are today for a time such as this, a set and appointed time. Is this making sense to y'all? Uh-huh, uh-huh. It is written, he said to them, my house might be, will be, will be called a house of what? 
But you are making it a what? A den, a den of robbers, a den of thieves. He said it is written because he was quoting Isaiah 56 verse 7. That my house should be called a house of prayer for all nations. All nations. That word nation, if you go to not only the Hebrew, but the Greek connotation, it literally means ethnos. Everybody say ethnos. Ethnos is where we get the word ethnic or ethnicity. Different races of people. You're trying to go to Africa when you got an African right here in your, uh, in your midst. You're trying to go to Mexico when you have the, 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 the ethnicity right here in your midst. You're trying to go to Czechoslovakia when you have that right here in your midst. Different races of people. How in the world can you get on a plane and go try to worship somewhere and witness somewhere when you won't do, even do it in your neighborhood? Jesus. You taking out the trash and you know they need Jesus. And oh, wait, no, no, because I have my passport. I'm going someplace else. It's bringing it in perspective for you now, ain't it? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says go out, I don't, hey, hey, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled in Luke 14, 23. I love the way the Holy Spirit maneuvers. I love it. I love it. Is it making sense to y'all? He said, it is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den, a den of robbers. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Prayer means to address God with adoration, confession, supplication, or thanksgiving. The Greek word means to offer prayers, to pray to God, supplications, watch this, to ask humbly and earnestly, to worship. Everybody say to worship. To worship. To worship. To worship. I want you to do me a favor. Go to Mark 11. Let's start at verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Now watch this. When I was younger, one of the first prayers I remember was, was now I lay me down to sleep. I praise the Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That was great when I was seven years old. Now I'm 37. That means that I got to get some depth on the inside of me. Amen. It's time for me to start going deeper in my prayers. That was cute back then. But now it's time for me to have an intimate relationship with the Father. It's time for me to go deeper. The koinonia, the fellowshipping. My prayer, this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Everybody say, I need some depth. Need some Philippians depth. chapter 1 verse 9, I pray that over each and every last one of y'all every morning. This is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. I want each and every person to have depth on the inside of them. Not just a surface level of prayer. Not just a surface level of Christianity. Not just a surface level of who the Father is. I want you to go deep because deep calls unto deep at the noise of his waters. Father God, I love your word. Psalms 22, verse 7. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Uh-huh. 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 Have faith in your check. In God. Because a lot of people do. Because a lot of people do. The Bible says trust in your money and down you go. <laughs> trust your neighbors. <laughs> but the godly flourish like leaves in spring. <laughs> Proverbs 11, verse 28. Trust in your money and down you go. But the godly flourish like leaves in spring. Trust or have faith in who? God. In, in God. Jesus answered. Let's go to the next verse. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this what? Mountain. Mountain go do what? Go throw, go throw yourself into the what? The and does not doubt in their what? Their but does what? But believe. That what they say will happen, it will be what? Done for them. Now watch this. It says the doubt in your what? In your heart. Sometimes the doubt is going to try to get to your mind. You just can't let it get to your heart. Is this making sense to you? It gets to your heart through meditating on it. It gets to your heart through you pondering on it. But by you allowing it to soak and allowing it to fester and allowing it to linger, then that's when it becomes a meditation. Then it gets into your heart. And then before you that, application takes place. Med memorization, meditation, and then application. Is that how, that's how it takes place? Is this making sense to y'all so far? Uh huh. He said, "In your heart, not not your head." Now I'm not saying to go stand in front of a physical mountain and say, "You better move right now, so I can drive my car past you." <laughs> Some of y'all get that radical in the spirit, don't y'all? <laughs> I'm not saying do that. Now I'm not saying that that can't happen either. 
Huh, according to your faith, be it unto you. Matthew 9, 29. See, I don't know about that kind of talk. You don't know about that kind of talk. But we'll get there. We'll get there. I promise you we will. Now, now, this mountain that it's talking about is a representation of an impossible situation in your life. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to move from here to there and it would and nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew 17, verse 20. Is this making sense to y'all so far? A mustard seed. That type of faith. That is the beginning phases of your faith right there. And that's all God asks you for. All he asks you for is a mustard seed size of faith. But unfortunately, we live in a society where we got all of the grapes and the oranges and the cantaloupes and all of that is overriding the mustard seed in the spirit. <laughs> is this making sense to y'all? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. God, I love your word so much. Therefore, everybody say therefore. 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 therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for after you pray. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it would. It will be yours. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask it is that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. First John 5, verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. When I'm praying, I have to make sure that I'm praying within the will of God and not outside of the will of God. It makes sure that it's lining up with these canonized scriptures. Is this making sense to you? Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Now, let me tell you something. God never gave, God never gave you prayer to come against a brother or sister in Christ. Hear me when I tell you that. God never gave you prayer to come against a brother or sister in Christ. He gave you prayer. He gave you prayer for communication with him. Amen. When you come against anything, you're coming against a spirit. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, yes, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Is this making sense to you? God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I come against Sister Slew. Because Sister Slew took my parking, shut my parking spot this morning. I'm going to throw my shoe. <laughs> God didn't give you prayers to come against an individual. He didn't give you prayers to be pity. Ugh. 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 Are y'all hearing me? He didn't give you prayers to be pity. And there's a lot of individuals who are praying these prayers, these pity prayers, these pitiful prayers, and they're only loving language in the air because it's not going past the ceiling. Jesus. If I speak in the tongue of men, or of angels, but don't have love. I'm only a resounding gong, hey, or a clanging cymbal. First Corinthians 13, verse 1. Gong, 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 and ain't nothing happening. All you're doing is making a lot of loud noise. Babbling, going on and on. Lord, 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 Jesus, Father, Father, Lord, 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 Lord. God, like, man, what is wrong with you? The Bible says we know that God does not listen to sinners, He listens to the godly person who does His will. John 9 verse 31. <laughs> we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. What is a sinner? Someone who is actively involved in their unrepented sin. Someone who is actively involved in their unrepented sin. You're doing this. Watch this. Your prayers are, are, are predicated on what God can do for you. Your prayers are predicated of God getting you out of situations. God, in the name of Jesus. We finna go get ready to rob this bank and I pray you give us great success. <laughs> the Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 3 that that's what you call praying amiss. <sighs> You're praying amiss. You're praying with the wrong motives or outside of the will of God. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Amen. Everybody say a house of, prayer. a house of prayer. This is a necessity. People have to know. We got to know what prayer is. And God did not give you prayer to, to, to just look at, 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 at the external and try to uh, attain those things. I want the car. I want the house. I want the, the wife. I want the husband. I want all of these different things. He didn't give you prayer for those things. He gave you prayer for, his, for your protection. Yes. Right now in the days that we're living in now, the society that we're living in now, you better pray for protection. You better pray Psalms 91 over your life, over your babies, over your home, over your bloodline, over your generation. Psalms 91. A thousand may fall at my side. Hey, ten thousand may die around me, but these evils will not touch me. The Bible says that. 
and the promises of God are yes and in him, they're amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Are y'all getting enough Bible so far? Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Now watch this. I want you to do me a favor. And I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 13. Go there in the message translation. We're going to read down a little bit. Isaiah chapter 13, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 13 in a message translation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Did you know? And it's, it's, it's railed up a little bit. It's, it's actually increased a little bit. But the average Christian, hear me now, the average Christian prays 18 minutes a day. <laughs> Statistics show that the average Christian prays 18 minutes a day. But watch this. The average American spends four hours and 37 hours uh, for, uh, four hours and 37 minutes on their phone a day. Jesus. The average Christian prays 18 minutes a day, but the average American spends four hours and 37 minutes on their phone a day. This has become a God in our life. This phone, that little gadget, that thing takes us away from everything. And we don't even realize it. It is zapping our time. It is zapping our strength. It is zapping our abilities. When was the last time we opened the book of LeVar used to tell us when we were school? He, he used to tell us when we were kids, take a look. It's in our book. <laughs> Reading rain. Raise your hand if y'all really listen to the LeVar. Y'all ain't look at him because y'all ain't like the way the color was set up on the TV. So y'all flipped it. Y'all want the cartoons. <laughs> Some of y'all like, Lamar, who is he? <laughs> I know Lamar Jackson, the quarterback. I don't know, I don't know anyone else. <laughs> Everybody say quit. quit. Quit your worship charades. I can't stand your trivial religious games. Monthly conferences. Weekly Sabbaths. Special meetings. Meetings, meetings, meetings. I can't stand one more. Let's go to the next verse. <laughs> Gerald, stop making me laugh. <laughs> meetings for this. Meetings for that. I hate them. You've worn me out. I'm sick of your religion. Jesus. Religion, religion. Why you go right on sinning? Everybody say religion. religion. Man-made rules that contradict sound doctrine. Man-made rules that contradict sound doctrine. That's dogma. You're allowing the traditions of man to override the word of God in your life. I know the Bible says this, but we're accustomed to doing this. Yeah. I know the Bible says this, but, 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 and you're canceling out what God said in his word. And let God be true and every man be a, a liar. Be a liar. Romans 3 verse 4. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Uh-huh. Let's go to the next verse. When you put on your next prayer performance, I'll be looking the other way. No matter how long or loud or often you pray, I'll not be listening. And do you know why? Because you've been tearing people to pieces and your hands are bloody. Jesus. Stop right there. Stop right there. He said, when you put on your next what? Prayer performance. Your next prayer performance. See, see, you have to have a crowd in order to pray. You don't have a secret place. You got to do it in public. Jesus. You got to let people know how articulate and eloquent you are when you're standing before the masses. That's how, that's how you operate. That's your, that's your MO. You want to see people. You want to do this for the people. You want to do this for the applause of people. The Bible says that they love the, the praises of men more than the praises of God. John 12 verse 43. Yes. It is making sense to you. A lot of people are stepping foot through the doors of the quote-unquote church because they don't want Christ. They want a concert. And they look at him as a celebrity and not a savior. And that's the problem in the body of Christ today. We want anything that's going to stimulate us but not impregnate us. Ugh. Is this making sense to y'all? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'll be looking the other way. No matter how long or loud or often you pray, I'll not be listening. And do you know why? Because you've been tearing people to pieces. How do you tear them to pieces? With your mouth? With your mouth. 
You have condemned and put to death the righteous man and he offers you no resistance. James chapter 5 verse 6. You have condemned and put to death the righteous man. Put to death the righteous man and he offers you no resistance. Huh. Watch this. And your hands are bloody. How's your hand bloody? When God has given you the opportunity to witness to somebody and you know that you know that you know that you were supposed to witness to that individual and you let them get right by you now that person's blood is on your hands Jesus. is this making sense to y'all so far uh-huh let's go to the next verse go home and do what Wash up. say that with me one more time go home and do what Wash up. go home and do what Wash up. one more time go home and do what Okay, okay. Clean up your act that has to do with your actions. Sweep your lives clean of your evil doings so I don't have to look at them any longer. Say no to wrong. Go to the next verse. Learn to do good. Work for justice. Help the down and out. Stand up for the homeless. Go to bat for the defenseless. Let, let's argue this out. Go back to verse 16. Go home and do what? Wash up. Wash up. Wash up. Wash up. Wash up. Come here, Izzy. Come here, Derek. Come here, Preston. Come here, John. Y'all give me a line going across here. Y'all step up there a little bit for me so I can get everybody in the line. Perfect. washing that you think can get sin off. You think that this type of washing can do away with sin. And I don't care how much perfume you spray. I don't care how much cologne you put on. Sometimes you got a spiritual stench that needs to be dealt with. Is this making sense to you? So when I approach the things of God, I'm trying to be too suave with it. I'm trying to be too smooth in the spirit. I'm trying to be too smooth when I'm witnessing the people. Mm. Hey, man, you know, you know, the Bible said like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> hey, the, hey, look, the Bible really do say it like this. <laughs> you trying to be too, you trying to be too cool in the spirit. <laughs> Not realizing that behind the smoothness, it's a stench there. I ain't talking about you. you know I mean? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh oh. And then I get to the dove. And I understand that the dove only lands, Gerald, in peaceful places. Hallelujah. The dove only lands in peaceful places. But you got individuals who come to church just so they can be pampered. They just want to be pampered. Because as soon as you call out my sin, as soon as you hit me right there in the middle, right there, as soon as you come in, I ain't coming over there no more. Because you hurt me. You hurt my feelings. Jesus. And I thought it was supposed to be happy times. Uh-oh. Irish friend. Oh. Now, now, now. Now, he's the only spring. The Bible says with joy you would draw water from the wells of salvation. I don't need to draw water from anybody else. That's Isaiah 12, verse 3. I don't need to draw water from anyone else except for the living water. Hallelujah. I'm going to all of these other different people, places, and things to receive the water of God. And the Bible tells me that if I drink this water, I'll never thirst again. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And this is the water, the water that I need right here. For the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in the sun scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well watered garden whose springs never fail. Hallelujah. Isaiah 58, verse 11. Right there. The spring. Uh oh. 
Uh oh. And then it's the only man that got caressed in there. And it matches. You want matches. You come to church because you want to be petted. <laughs> <laughs> you coming to church because you want to be caressed and finessed. <laughs> you coming to watch this, you coming to church because you looking for that boo thing. <laughs> your motive is completely off. You in the church house, but your motives are not here. No, 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 no. You coming in here and you... Uh-oh. I'm not. I'm gonna pull that back real quick. I'm gonna pull that back real quick. I am not. I will not do that. No, sir. No, sir. You hissing. You hissing. You hissing. You hissing. They, they, they got a snake. It's a specific set snake. And it's called. It's called a blue chaser. It's called a blue chaser. And it's almost like the snake. It's almost like it's chasing you. It's, 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 it's chasing you. And, and 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 a lot of people come to church because they're chasing something. They're chasing something, but they're not chasing the Father. <laughs> you may be chasing a man. You may be chasing finances. You may be chasing a woman. You may be chasing all of these other different things, but are you pressing in and are you going after the Father? Is this making sense to y'all so far? Then, hallelujah. Everybody say last but not least. Last but not least. Last, <coughs> last but not least. I got what? Dial. Everybody say that with me one more time. Dial. See, this right here take me back. To my childhood, hallelujah. Because I remember there was a specific song that my grandma and my mom used to sing. And, and, and it went a little something like this. Jesus is on the main line. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Tell him. Tell him what you want. And, and, and then it says you just call him up and tell him. Tell him what you want. But this is what we're doing. We get to the church and we can't wait to to leave so we can dial a number we don't supposed to. We come to the church. We come to the church and we're here just to say, you know what? I checked it off my I checked it off my box for the week. I checked it off my box for 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 for, for the for the entire month. And, and and what happens is you don't realize, you don't realize that when you're dialing all of the other things, you're opening yourself up so that the, the, the familiar spirits can enter in and attach themselves to your soul. Jesus. Mm-hmm. 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 Touch your neighbor and say, close the doors. 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 This is not the type of washing that it's talking about. Right. It's talking about a spiritual cleansing. It's talking about a spiritual purifying. The Bible says that let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. Perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Is this making sense to y'all? Everybody say I have to purify myself. How can a young person stay on a path of righteousness or a path of purity by living according to your word? Psalms 119 verse 9. Uh, verse nine. Are y'all getting enough scripture in you this morning? Because I want y'all to have something that's going to stick and something that you can take with you when you leave this place. Y'all praise God for them. Put my stuff back in my bag, man, because I, I ain't got to go to the store for a long time. For a long time, I ain't got to go. Uh, dog. I'm going to get that caress of Shawana. I'm not going to wear that, Sean. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Now watch this. Now watch this. The Bible says in John 15, verse 3, you're already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. <laughs> this is what cleanses you. This is what purifies you right here. You're already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. The more and more you spend time in his word, the more and more it'll cleanse you and purify you. I heard somebody say it like this before. I heard somebody say it like this before. This book will keep you from sinning, but sin will keep you from this book. It just making sense to you. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. Let me reverse that. This book will keep you from sin, but sin will keep you from this book. Jesus. Is that making sense to you? Amen. That's how you have to look at that situation. Is this word blessing y'all so far? Uh-huh. 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 Now, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go to Luke 18, start at verse 9. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. 
Now watch this. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Amen. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You have to make sure that when God gives you a safe haven or somebody that you can go and release to, you can walk away from that situation and not feel raped. You can walk away from that situation and not feel like, like you know what, uh, 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 is this person going to go back and tell all of my business? You need someone, watch this, who is going to help you heal and not open the womb even more. Jesus. That's what you need in your life, man. Amen. You need somebody who is going to be there to give you the truth, but they're going to be able to help you bandage yourself up in the matter. Does that make sense to you? Amen. That's good. To some who were confident of their own what, you guys? Of their own righteousness. I have what you call positional righteousness. Uh huh. I'm seated with him in heavenly places all because I'm one with Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Positional righteousness. And then I have progressive righteousness. Hallelujah. Progressive righteousness. When he takes me from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Hallelujah. That is my righteousness. I, it, 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 it's progressive. But then you have what you call self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is when you bring everything unto yourself. The Bible says in Job chapter 31 that, that, that Job's friends stopped answering him because he was righteous in his own eyes. His friends stopped answering him because he was righteous in his own eyes. That's Job uh, chapter 32 verse 1. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Let's go to the next verse. Two men, everybody say two men. two men. They went up to the temple to do what, you guys? Pray. To pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Let's go to the next verse. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you. Hey, hey. That I am not like other people. No, no, no. Robbers, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even this tax collector. Jesus. Man. Go to the next verse. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. Let's go to the next verse. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast. Everybody say he beat his breast. When they beat their breast, that was a sign of mourning. That was a sign of lament back then. Have you ever been in a place to where you couldn't even approach God because your head was down? Have you ever been in a place where you knew, like, Lord, I've crossed you time and time again, and I'm getting to a place to where it hurts my heart to hurt your heart? That means that true growth is taking place in your Hallelujah. life. True growth is taking place in your life. Amen. But if you're like the Pharisee and you're calling out everybody else's sin and you're using the word as a sword, you got to use the word as a mirror first. Hallelujah. Because the word is going to always show you a reflection of who you are before it shows you somebody else. Amen. Judge not according to appearance, hey, but judge with righteous judgment according to John 7 verse 24. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me. A sinner. Let's go to the next verse. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home. What, you guys? Justified. Declared righteous in the sight of God, before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be what? Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you set your heart to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Daniel was humble before the, before, before the Father. You have to come humbly before the Father. Then if my people who are called by my name will do what, you guys? Humble themselves. And then do what, you guys? Humble themselves and pray. Humble themselves and pray. You have to make sure that every time you're approaching the Father, it's from a place of humility. Because humility is what's going to exalt you. Humility is where honor comes. Humility is what the Father is looking for. Jesus was so humble that he rode in, not on a Ferrari, he rode in on a donkey. A Nubian donkey. That was a representation of his humility. Is this making sense to y'all? 
Everybody say, I have to humble myself. I have to humble myself. Because you don't want to get humbled. The Bible says don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. In Romans chapter 12 verse 3. Meaning don't have an exaggerated opinion of yourself. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. I can promise you that God will bring you down just as fast as he rose you up. So please hear me. Please hear me. When you're looking at somebody else, you're looking at their life and you want to point fingers at them and laugh. Realize that that stuff can spin the block and come right back on you. Because blessings will always go forth, but those curses will boomerang. And he who digs a pit for others will do what? Will fall in it themselves. Amen. Proverbs 26, verse 27. Are y'all getting enough Bible this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And watch this. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get ready. It's, um, where's Shawana at? My wife at. Shawana. Like, Watch this. I, uh, before that, before that, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I want you go to Colossians chapter four, verse two. Colossians chapter four, verse two. Colossians chapter four, verse two. I want y'all to say this with me. Say a prayerless church is a powerless church. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. That's why we don't have no meeting walking through here smiling. Boy, you got assignments, girl. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Our prayerless church is a powerless church. Colossians chapter four, uh, Colossians chapter four, verse two says this. It says, "Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful." Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Everybody say, "I have to devote myself." I have to devote myself. I have to be dedicated. I have to be committed. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing, without pause or break, without intermission. Prayer. Prayer. I've heard people say it like this before. All we can do now is pray. Really? All we can do now is pray. Prayer has to be the number one thing in your life. Now, I told her to pull this up for me because... This is a wall in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. This is a wall in Jerusalem, and they call it the Western Wall, or also known as the Wailing Wall. People from all around the world, all walks of life, come to this wall because this was not a part of the temple. This was a part of the remains that were outside of the temple. This was a part of the remains outside of the temple that uh, Herod the Great had built. And, 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 and you see these people doing something. What do you see them doing right here? We see them standing by the wall, touching the wall, and they're weeping over the destruction of the temple. They're weeping over it. And this has been going on for years and years and years. But not only that, do y'all see these white things inside of the, uh, the temple? Those are prayers that people from around the world, they come and they stuff the prayers inside of the cracks. Two times out of the year, they would take the prayers and put them in a uh, bag and go bury them in a Jewish cemetery. <laughs> Two times out of the year, they would do these different things. And then it's able to get filled up again. No man, no woman, no person on this earth reads these prayers because it's a prayer that a direct line between you and the Father, the prayer wall. This is said to believe to be the most holy place in the world, in Jerusalem, in Israel, because the gates never close. It's open 24-7. 24-7, you have all kinds of people, all kinds of colors, all kinds of creeds, all kinds of ethnicities that are praying right now, even as we speak. They're traveling in just to go to the Welling Wall. And it's sad to believe that there's such a presence right when you get there on, there, on, on the vicinity of it. You're there, and it makes you just want to fall down and just weep, 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 because they come in by the drones, and they're praying. Do you know the power of prayer? Do you know that the Bible says in Deuteronomy 32 verse 30 that one can send a thousand a flight, but two can send ten thousand a flight? Is this making sense to y'all? Everybody say the power of prayer. I'm going to get ready to end on this. I'm going to get ready to end on this. We were, uh, we were in Bible study a few, a few weeks ago. 
And um, and there was a beautiful lady. There was a beautiful lady who uh, who came in here, and she was on her walker. And when she walked in here on her walker, I'm I'm getting ready to close the service. And as soon as I get ready to close the service, I didn't even do an altar call yet. Everybody say true story. I didn't even do an altar call yet. But the spirit of God hit her and she rolled up here to this altar. Let me ask you a question. How desperate are you for your miracle? How desperate are you to get exactly what you need? I, 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 I want you guys, I want you guys to see something. I want you guys to, I want you guys to see the power of the group and the power of prayer. She came up here with the walker and now when we came together and we laid hands on this woman, to the power of God, to the power of God, God healed her, God restored her. Does she have a walker with her today? No. Huh? Because Jesus is her walker. Yeah. Yeah. She has stripped her knees. He gave strength to her. And now she can walk to tell the story. And when she came in, she told me, that was a, what, that was a few months ago, but you told me that you hadn't walked by yourself since what? January, did you say January 18th? January how long? January 18th. January 18th. And how long was that when, when, when it yeah. happened? What day was that when it happened? It was uh, early Sunday morning. So that was probably what? Uh... That was what, that was a couple months that you worked more. Wow. Five, five, months. five months being able to walk. Five months without being able to walk by yourself and look what the Lord has done instantaneously. You better tell me that God can walk. You better tell me that Hallelujah. 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 Y'all praise God for this woman of God. I want y'all. I want y'all to praise God if y'all got something from that word. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray for the people here and through social media. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your love and faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that miracle signs and wonders are following those who believe in you, God. We do not take this opportunity lightly. And we say that those, Father, who do not know you, that they come into the absolute fullness of who you are. We bless you, God. And we revere you, Lord, for salvation taking place this day, Father, without delay. Your word says, for in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay, according to Hebrews 10, verse 37. So we thank you for divine appointments uh, that's taking place. And we say right now, Father, that those who do know you, Father, but they've been living a life that is not pleasing and acceptable unto you, that true repentance takes place so that they can get their life back in right standing with you. In the master's name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all praise God here. Love y'all. Thank you.